See, a lot of people look at their past as wounds that they need to heal from, when in fact, these are muscles that you developed that now, having gone through this development, you can do extraordinary things that ordinary people can't do. You know how you build a muscle, right? I mean, you put it under intense stress and strain. Intense stress and strain, repeatedly putting it under stress. And then what you're actually doing is tearing the muscle fiber. You're actually destroying the muscle during the process. And then in rest and recovery, it grows back bigger than it was before. And now you're able to lift weight that you couldn't possibly have done before and maybe more than everybody else around you. is made up and I wanna go and I've been thinking about what to do been thinking about me about being you for a long time I try to find reason to stay here in this cage of mine well I, I don't need no borderline I, I don't need that frame of mind let me tell you I don't need nobody nobody but me And I want you back Those things I ever said Regret seeing that Funny how I never, never saw it before I guess sometimes Gotta walk out the door Don't it always seem to go You don't know what you got Tell it to Don't it always seem to go That you don't know what you got Till it's gone I do need somebody I need my baby Yeah, yeah
My mentor Jim Rohn said a lot of people look at their past as like a, a, a billy club that they just keep beating themselves over the head with. And instead you need to look at it as a training ground that this gave you the extraordinary development that allows you to go do the extraordinary things that ordinary people can't do.
So one of the first things that you want to sort of derail from your own mind is this. Stop looking for the quick fix for success, happiness, and wealth. One does not exist.
fucking one o'clock. Hey, hey! What? Hey, shut the f hey, shut the fuck up already! Why? So you can watch more TV? That's what? all you fucking do anyway. No, it's not, asshole. Look at my baby! They're like, get this crazy man off the streets. I noticed, but lately I've been drifting aimlessly. We had some snow showers overnight. And it's the Eric Andre show. This is my grandson, Morty. Oh, hi, Morty. Oh, jeez, and this is my. Basic tree shapes. So just bend the brush. Bend the brush. Make those little leaves and branches just pop right out at you. There he comes. And maybe we'll just put some little grass here. He's coming down through here. And right there. There's one. This is your world, your creation. Right? See, the truth about earning success, earning success, is this. The process is mundane. When you go back to your offices, what you've got to do to improve and make progress on your success, it's, it's mundane. It is also unexciting. I mean, nobody's going to film you in your office working and put on some fabulous new reality TV show that's going to attract viewers from around the world. It's, it's truly unexciting. It's not sexy in the least. It is also, at times, really laborious, if not downright frustrating. And many times, it's gut-wrenchingly, heart-stompingly defeating. But hey, that doesn't make for interesting books or exciting infomercials, or riveting movies. So instead, we're constantly paraded around with these quick fix ideas, these shortcut pathways, you know, to success, happiness, wealth. Success is earned by hard freaking work, period, the end. Three words, anybody ever asked you how you became so successful, what they need to do to increase their success, say it's three words, hard freaking work, that's it. There's no other pathway to the pot at the end of the rainbow besides hard freaking work. You're faced with a minefield of decisions all day throughout the day and each one of them is like another chisel mark on the statue that you're building. And it either becomes, based on those decisions, the statue of David, or it becomes a pile of rubble. It is one phone call at a time. You know the phone call you don't want to make, the one you're intimidated to make, you know the one you know, that, that makes your palms sweat even thinking about picking up the phone? Each one of those is another chisel mark on the statue. One meeting at a time. You know the meeting you didn't want to go to? Maybe this one? As you were contemplating your options, do I go, not go, I got this obligation, this appointment, this urgency, this fire, do I go, not go? This could end up becoming an important decision that will define ultimately success. And here's the deal, a lot of you in this room are successful, and congratulations. But you can never own success, you can only rent it, and the rent is due every single day.
If we're to boil it down to just one thing, the one most important control factor for all the outcomes of your life, what is it? What is the one root control factor? In other words, we all come into this world exactly the same. Naked, scared, and ignorant. Now a couple of us come in a little uglier than the rest, but you saw my baby photo, right? One thing, think about it, what is the one thing that will determine after a long life do you end up broke, despondent, and lonely, or do you end up in a marriage of 50 years of incredible intimacy and fantastic bliss? Only one thing determines whether you get to send your children to the greatest universities in the world, or no matter what they have earned their way into, they can't go because you can't afford to send them. Only one thing. As Curly from City Slicker said, it all comes down to the one thing. So, what's the one thing? Well, I'm glad I came today. If your whole life is coming down to this one thing and nobody knows what the one thing is, I am glad that you invested that we be here today. Here's the one thing.
Here's the one thing. It all comes down to choices. Right now, as you sit there in that chair, your whole life is nothing but the accumulated compound effect of the choices you've made up to this moment. Your waistline is nothing but the accumulated compound effect of the choices you've made up to this moment. Your business, nothing but the accumulated compound effect of the choices you've made up to this moment. The intimacy of the relationships in your life are all a product of the continuum accumulated compound effect of the choices you've made to this moment. So if we're going to change the trajectory of your life, we've got to go to the root source of where it all begins. And it all begins with choices. Change your choices, change the trajectory of your life. So now the question is, this is the first line of code within the operating system. The question then becomes, well, which choices? Right? Because we're faced with choices all day throughout the day. Which choices have the greatest bearing on our outcome? Well, how many people here have ever been bitten by an elephant? Anybody? No? How about mosquitoes? Anybody been bitten by a mosquito? OK, see, nature provides clues. It's usually the little things in life that will bite you. And that's the same thing when it comes to life as well. I get asked the question all the time. There's 7 billion people in the, on this planet. We get to pick 12 to appear on the cover of Success Magazine. Only 12 out of 7 billion. The question is, is what do these guys and gals do differently than the other 7 billion people to have them land on the cover of Success Magazine? So I've come here to tell you the answer to that. If that's an intriguing question and you'd like the answer, let me tell you. Here's what it is not, because this is what people think is the difference that these people have performed in order to appear on the cover of Success Magazine. Success is not a result of heroic feats, you know, doing something extraordinary, some heroic act. No. It is not grand acts of bravery. Another an American myth that, you know, just leap and hope that the net appears. Please don't do that because you bounce hard. No, none of these people performed any grand act of bravery. It is also not because of any quantum leap, some right place, right time, overnight, overnight success story. You won't see that as well. Success is, however, a result of this. And this is how each of them have appeared on the cover of Success Magazine. Again, again, in my portrait, I would paint the feeling that I'm hosting me. Cerulean would paint the campus and never end. And if I could smile, I would. But it go to my deepest dark as I grab my pen and write it over again. Cause I will see you when I see you on the other side.
With a creative mind comes responsibility. The challenges of self-doubt. The joys of expression. The bouts of depression. A way to learn who you truly are. Your over-analytical, critical self. Your creative, open-minded self. Focus on social headlines and feed your vanity and insecurities. Focus on your vision and reach your potential. So when you meet that person with an equally creative, beautiful mind who inspires you to be better, never let go. Success is, however, a result of this. Small, seemingly insignificant, moment-to-moment choices. The accumulated compound effect of the continuum of choices that they've made are drastically different than the seven billion people on the planet over time. And that is what has given them the quantum difference in results. Small choices like at lunch, you're given a menu. And a menu is nothing but what? A whole series of choices, right? Do you pick the hamburger and fry or do you pick the salad? Does not seem like a colossal choice in and of itself. But small little choices like at the end of a long hard day, do you put in an hour workout or do you rush home to catch your favorite sitcom? Small little choices like in the heat of a battle, do you say, I- I'm just, I'm done with this, and do you walk out of a room, or do you choose to pivot on your heel, say you're sorry, and make a moment of magic? Small little choices like at a networking event, you know there's somebody across the room that you really want to meet and introduce yourself. Do you walk across and boldly introduce yourself, or do you hunker down in fear once again? Small little choices like at the end of a long day, do you push to put in a few more calls or do you just call it a day? You know, you, all these small choices add up to big results by comparison. And this is what people don't understand. They, this is the misnomer that these, these small choices don't matter. But let me just show you how this ends up working. I'm going to give you a mathematical and a practical example. If I were to give you the option of a, a single penny that doubles every day for 31 days, or a million dollars in cash right now, how many people would pick the million dollars in cash? 
Tough crowd. OK, let me sweeten the offer here. A penny doubles every day for 31 days, or 2 million in cash. How many people picked the 2 million in cash? OK, a couple more. There's a time when this math's going to turn on, you've got to figure it out here, right? All right, 3 million in cash. How many people picked the penny that doubles every day for 31 days, or 3 million in cash right now? 3 million? OK. So let me show you how this works out. Let's say that you did pick the penny, because we've been talking about how small things create big results, and you catch the clue, even though you didn't know how the math worked. Let's say you picked the penny, and your buddy picked the $3 million in cash. So here's how this ends up working out mathematically. At the end of day five, your penny is worth a lousy 16 cents. They got $3 million in cash, partying like a rock star. You've got a handful of 16 pennies. The end of day 10, your penny is a lousy $5.12, not enough for a happy meal at McDonald's. They're parting with Robin Leach, having champagne and caviar dreams, right? Day 20, your penny's worth $5,242. They got their $3 million, $3 million bucks. And on day 31, your penny is worth $10,737,000 against their $3 million. This is why Einstein called compound interest the eighth wonder of the world. But here's the deal. The math between day one and day two is exactly the same math between day 30 and day 31. In other words, the effort applied in which to grow the result was exactly the same at the front and the back. But the results were dramatically different. This is why I call compound choices the eighth wonder of the success world.
Now let me make this more practical. Let's take three friends, starting out exactly the same. Uh, they all graduated from the same university, got the same degree, got the same kind of job, making 50,000 bucks a year. They've been married for five years. They've accumulated some of that husband marriage flab that seems to happen on these guys, right? You know, they moved to the suburbs, buy um, a house with a white picket fence, got 2.2 children, right? Everybody's starting off the same. And let's say that Scott picks up a copy of Success Magazine while he's going through the airport, reads a couple of things that inspires him and says, hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try a couple of these things, just sort of see how it works out for me. So here's what Scott's gonna do. He's gonna, instead of getting up and reading the newspaper to find out about all the wars, tragedies, crime, gossip, and corruption, he's gonna read 10 pages of a good book, something positive, something instructional, something inspiring. Instead of on the way to the office, hearing about you know, the sports scores and who's been traded where and you know, who's gonna play next, next game or more wars, crime, scandals, and gossip on, on news radio, he's just gonna put in a CD, something positive, something instructional, something inspiring. He's gonna cut out 125 calories from his diet. Again, no crash diet. This is no extreme makeover. This is no biggest loser. We're talking about a small bowl of cereal or half a candy bar. That's all he's gonna cut out of his diet. He's gonna drink two bottles of water a day. He's gonna park at the back of the parking lot and walk into the office. He's gonna miss a few, he's, he's going to make a few more calls at the end of the day before calling it a day. And he's gonna finally make his weekly date night with his wife a priority. No matter what, it happens every single week. Now that's all Scott's gonna do. When you look at this, how many people believe truly that, that, that they could do Scott's plan? Yeah, easy, right? Simple stuff. Now Larry, Larry is just going to keep doing what Larry's always done and expecting different results, right? Now Brad, here's all Brad's going to do. He's just going to munch on a little junk food around the office. You know the, the half a handful of chocolate covered peanut M&Ms? Or you know the chocolate covered pretzels at the end of the secretary's desk? Just once a day, no, no big deal. He's gonna miss a couple of workouts a week. He's gonna drink more Diet Coke than water, God forbid. He's gonna move around a little less because he's sitting in front of his, his desk and he's going, going home to his couch. He's gonna skip a prospecting call or two and he's gonna give his cold, a cold shoulder to the spouse once or twice throughout the week. Again, we're not gonna call on Jerry Springer to film the inside of this domestic situation. Just a cold shoulder a couple few times throughout the week. Well, let's add up the results between these three friends. Five months down the line, these friends look exactly the same. There's no mathematical difference to their results whatsoever. Ten months down the road, exactly the same. Now Scott's getting a little bummed out. He's like, man, I'm doing this damn date night. I'm making these extra calls. I'm reading this book, listening to these, listening to these CDs. And my results are exactly the same with my buddies. My buddies are sloughing off, having a great time, and our results are exactly the same. This is where people get faked out. <laughs> um, hey dude. Yeah? Um, it's getting kind of late, so I think I'm gonna pass out. Oh, shucks. You can't say another 25? Nah, dude, I, I, I really can't. I'm getting kind of sleepy. I, I can't. I don't. Don't what? Don't wanna let you go. Stay for a bit. Yeah, I mean, like, sure, like, if you want, I guess. Okay, but under one condition. Yeah? I don't know, I kind of want the second part to sound a little bouncer, you know? Yeah, I can see that. Uh, do you have any ideas? Um, maybe, like, this?
Now, Scott's getting a little bummed out. He's like, man, I'm doing this damn date night. I'm making these extra calls. I'm reading this book, listening to these, listening to these CDs. And my results are exactly the same with my buddies. My buddies are sloughing off, having a great time, and our results are exactly the same. This is where people get faked out. But Scott's going to just keep on keeping on. 20 months down the road, slight differences between the three friends. It's really not visible or noticeable. Nobody else really knows, but Brad can just sort of feel it in the belt a little bit, right? And tension has started to set in and boil at the office. And apathy has started to set in at home. Again, nobody else knows. All the friends and neighbors, nobody would know, but it started to set in. 27 months down the road, the results between these three friends are dramatic. Let's add it up. So here's what Scott's done. Over the last just 27 months, he's read 47 books on success and achievement. Now, the average college graduate doesn't read three books the rest of their life. And he's read 47 books on success and achievement. He's listened to 465 hours of success and achievement on audio. Do you think these two things are going to affect his mindset, his philosophy, his attitude, thus his results in life? Dramatically. The 125 calories he cut out of his diet, just that 125 calories meant that he's shed 33 and a half pounds. 33 and a half pounds. I was with Dr. Oz three weeks ago, and he said, we could end obesity in America if everybody just cut 125 calories out of their diet. That's it. He uh, drank 3,700 gallons of water. He walked 900 miles by just parking at the back of the parking lot. His 124 date nights with the wife. I had photos for that, but it got risque, right? So I just put X's and O's. Those couple extra calls that he made per day, 1,860 calls he wouldn't have made otherwise, which meant that if he closed only 3%, meaning he didn't learn anything from those books or those audio programs, he would have added on top of his $50,000 a year income an additional $279,000. Those are the results of Scott. Now, Larry, on the other hand, Larry's like most people in America right now, treading water, falling a little bit further behind, becoming disenchanted, bored, apathetic, passionless, disengaged, and blaming Obama, right? <laughs> Brad. Brad's 125 calories that he added meant that he added 33 and a half pounds to his frame, missed a couple of workouts, drank more Diet Coke than water. Now he's added more weight and he's under cardiac arrest danger. Missed a few meetings, made a few less calls. Now he's in business and financial emergency, not knowing how he arrived there. And this inattention and cold shoulder to the spouse, apathy is dead set, and he's on the brink of divorce. Small, seemingly insignificant choices in a positive direction compound to extraordinary results. In a poor direction, compound into disastrous results. So one of the first things that you want to sort of derail from your own mind is this. Stop looking for the quick fix for success, happiness, and wealth. One does not exist.